Dmitry Shostakovich, an example of what some argue is art's inability to flourish without freedom? Or was he a brilliant political rebel forced into a dangerous game of cat and mouse with Joseph Stalin himself? To find the answer for yourself, you need to listen to the music of Shostakovich and get into the mind and motivations of the Russian composer. We've asked South Dakota Symphony Orchestra music director Delta David Geyer to do a little digging through the music for us. He's here to tell us more about this weekend's concert featuring the music of Shostakovich along with dramatic readings from Joe Horowitz, an award-winning expert on music and history. Welcome. Thank you. Like, I love this so much. I mean, there's so many things to talk about with Shostakovich. Um, let's talk a little bit about why, for this particular concert, you have a music historian coming along the journey with you. Well, as with any great art, I mean, you can experience it, just come in and say, wow, that's really fabulous music. But the deeper you dig, the more you get out of it. It could be Shakespeare, whatever that is, you know. Uh, so uh, what we've done is created a, an introduction in the midst of the concert to this great work of Shostakovich, the se uh, Seventh Symphony, so that people can, you know, understand it a little bit better, appreciate it more. And what I maybe alluded to in that intro, people have a, there are different, there's sort of a Shostakovich war out there of what is behind Shostakovich music. Is he great? Is he not? There's a lot of propaganda, right? So can we maybe talk a little bit about the, the conflict in, in maybe Shostakovich versus like Stravinsky and the freedom part? Well, I mean, Shostakovich lived and died underneath the <laughs> communist regime, and he received, he received multiple death threats from Stalin himself. Mm -hmm. So um, when you hear the music of Shostakovich, anyone, the big question is, what does this music mean? Because Shostakovich didn't say, oh, I'm writing this piece about this. What he, what he became was a voice of the Russian people underneath the Soviet regime. Mm -hmm. Stalin recognized this subversive voice, which is why he seemed to always be in trouble. <laughs> um, but at the same time, he provided strength for his people. And someone from the outside might ask you why you're featuring a communist Russian composer in a time when there's a Ukrainian conflict uh, with Russia, but it's not dissimilar. It's not, I mean, if you, I've spent the last eight months with this and you read about the siege of Leningrad, 900 days, the longest siege in the history of the world. There were two and a half million people trapped for that time and one and a half of them died. One and a half million people died of starvation, of the bombings and all of that. So when you see what's happening in Ukraine, it's kind of hard not to draw the parallel. Right, because the Shostakovich Seventh Symphony was written in, under that siege, he During was there. During the siege, yes. Well, he was from Leningrad yeah. to begin with. And he wrote this symphony as an encouragement to his fellow Leningraders during the siege. Um, it's, again, something that we might not, not necessarily relate to because uh, he was not just a famous composer, but a real celebrity. Mm -hmm. So uh, his, everybody waited for his next symphony, his next opera, you know, because he was, he was so great. So for him to basically say, I'm going to devote myself to a piece to support my fellow Leningraders. Now, the siege was from the Nazis. We're talking about 1941. Right. It's the, you know, so it's, hit, it's Hitler's invasion of, of the Soviet Union that we're fighting against. Right. And you're also, so in the first part of the concert, when you attend, you're going to have Joe Horowitz doing some dramatic readings, et cetera, and you're gonna hear some um, other pieces that have a lot of history and are also important to you too in the in this Fifth Symphony and the Macbeth. Right, so, um, so Joseph Horowitz, music historian, he's created about a 30 minute introduction that he and I will do together with the orchestra on stage, playing examples of music that pre preceded the Seventh Symphony that mm -hmm. led up to it, just to sort of contextualize it, and we'll we'll set up the story and with examples from the Seventh Symphony also. And then, and and, and it's it's important to note because when we talk about um, the Seventh Symphony and, and everything that's happening, and sort of that relationship that Stalin and Shostakovich had, right, where he Shostakovich I think had a bag packed ready to go, not that he would have been allowed to take said bag with him, right, but he was aware at any minute he thought maybe Stalin was coming for him. That's right. Well, artists were disappearing daily mm -hmm. at that during that period. It was it was a purge that Stalin of intellectuals, artists, all these people that could be seen as subversive 
to the state. So this is the pressure that Shostakovich lived under, but he kind of just, you know, like his people were under siege, like yeah. forget all that. We're in this together. I'm writing this piece for you. And from, and I believe in the, the piece that you're gonna have some excer excerpts from the Macbeth, which was one where Stalin at one point was present and just walked out of, and then wrote right. him a death threat in the paper. That's right, that's right. He didn't like it. <laughs> and uh, and you, you might be able to hear why the little excerpts we're playing from it. Like, oh yeah, I can see why Stalin might not have liked that. And so then he, at the time, then when he went on to write his fourth symphony, he had to just kind of shelve it to do a fifth symphony, which was like a, so maybe a peace treaty, etc., but also had maybe some underlying uh, It's true. Statements. It's true. So, yes, the, um, after that first death threat from Joseph Stalin, he wrote his fifth symphony. Um, a Soviet artist's reply to just criticism was the, was the subtitle. Um, but was it? That's the question. Like, <laughs> or was he still being subversive? I think he was. Uh, we'll raise that question and we'll play examples from that. And this is a very special piece to me. And I want to hear a little bit about that because that, that the Shostakovich Fifth Symphony is really special to you. Yes, well, it was the piece that I conducted for my audition here with the South Dakota Symphony, but it goes back much further because I, my Fulbright was in the former Eastern Bloc under communism. Mm -hmm. So I lived through this, I lived with people, I stood in line with bread, for bread with them. So I, you know, I'm not gonna say I suffered like they did, but I, I witnessed it, you know, really firsthand and, and my heart just is, it aches for that whole, that whole communist thing. Yeah. It's, I want to get to the details of the concert so that people can attend because we've just, I mean, I, this is amazing. So Saturday, we will have this at the Washington Pavilion and it's going to be just an amazing time. Also to note, if you want to learn more and have more conversation, you can come in advance and hear you talk about it with Joe Horowitz. Right. Joe Horowitz and I will be giving a pre-concert talk, which is free, included with the price yeah. of your ticket, um, at 630 in the hall. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And, Thanks for having um, me. for having this amazing concert. Yeah. There's never been a better time to become a friend of the South Dakota Symphony by donating today. Your tax-deductible gift is critical for continuing orchestra concerts, music education programs, and impactful community building programs. You can also support the symphony by purchasing season tickets as a gift for yourself or someone you know who would love the music of the South Dakota Symphony Orchestra. Season tickets are available through the Washington Pavilion box office and online at sdsymphony.org. This Kelloland Living segment has been sponsored by the South Dakota Symphony Orchestra, embarking on its next 100 years by building with a strong heritage to create an even stronger future.